And in the last hour, the Paris prosecutor has given an update on the investigation and said the suspect showed no sign of radicalisation during previous detentions. TRT World's Miriam Francois now joins me live from Paris with more. Miriam, what, what more did the Paris prosecutor have to say? Well, he opened the session saying that the mood was very different to that three days ago when, of course, uh, the uh, security services had thwarted uh, an attack in Marseille. Uh, and, of course, today uh, they stood there uh, in the knowledge that a police officer had died here on the Champs-Élysées um, um, at the hands of a man who had uh, been uh, on the uh, police uh, watch for, for a while now. Uh, what we did find out was a few more details about where the investigation is at now. So it, uh, we know that uh, Karim Shafi uh, drove up this road just behind me, uh, took the back roads before pulling up uh, next to the police uh, car just on the Champs-Élysées here behind me. He then shot the uh, police officer who was driving in the head, killing him, and injured two of the other officers. There was also uh, a, a tourist, nearby tourist, who was injured um, by one of the uh, shards of the bullets. We also know uh, that he was identified uh, through his fingerprints matching with uh, an ID that was found uh, at the time, as well as a handwritten note which was expressing support for Daesh, as well as uh, carrying the address of police institutions. Um, they also found uh, now through the investigation his phone, his um, uh, computer at home have been searched. So far, uh, nothing recovered uh, from those. Um, however, what was certainly interesting was the fact that although Kareem Sherfi had spent a significant time in prison, he uh, was released in 2015, having spent uh, four years for aggra aggravated theft. Uh, he does not appear to have been radicalized during that period that he spent there. He was also previous to that um, uh, convicted of 15 years for an attempted triple homicide. Uh, during that time, it said that there was no indication uh, that he had uh, been radicalized or that there was any sign uh, of proselytism. He was not on the police uh, terror list. Um, however, we do know uh, a little bit more uh, about the fact that he had appeared uh, on a uh, some form uh, of a uh, uh, suspect list for radicalization earlier this year, uh, not least because of indications that he was looking to acquire weapons to get in touch with uh, members of Daesh and to uh, carry out an attack on police officers. Now, further details, of course, are awaited on um, how this attack came about, where he acquired uh, the weapons and whether or not there were any other individuals involved. Of course, that investigation is clearly going to continue, but the focus this weekend is the election, isn't it? I mean, is this terror attack going to influence the direction, do you think, of the, of the last moments of the campaign or indeed the way people vote? Indeed. Well, 24 hours uh, now before people uh, will start heading to uh, polling stations. And of course, uh, what we did see was that yesterday, immediately after the attack, uh, which happened during the final uh, debate among all of the presidential candidates, all 11 of them, there was an immediate turn in the uh, discussion, which uh, shifted from some of the key themes of unemployment, um, ecology, uh, housing, immediately to the issue of security. And that, of course, has been the theme of the day. But the Prime Minister, uh, Bernard Kaznov, warned today that candidates shouldn't seek to uh, instrumentalize uh, the incident for their political ends. In particular, uh, he was pointing the finger at uh, the uh, National Front candidate, Marine Le Pen. But he also took aim at the Républicain candidate, the uh, right-wing candidate, François Fillon, uh, pointing out that François Fillon had indeed been in government when there had been a significant cut to police figures. So although the uh, direction of the discussion has moved towards security, the final polls which emerged today don't necessarily point to uh, a significant shift away from uh, what they have so far. We're expecting uh, so far uh, uh, Emmanuel Macron, the centrist candidate, is still in the lead. Uh, Marine Le Pen uh, is trailing uh, him, uh, depending on which polls, one of them leading or the other. They're the two front runners. And behind them uh, are uh, François Fillon, the right-wing candidate for Les Républicains, and Jean-Luc Mélenchon, uh, the far-left candidate, uh, both also neck and neck. Well, Miriam, you're in for a busy weekend. Thank you.